are calling to order this meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board for April 23rd, 2018. We begin, as always, with the adoption of the agenda. Does anyone have any changes or alterations to the agenda? If not, I would look for a motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt tonight's agenda. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of adopting the agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. That motion carries unanimously. We will now go to our minutes. First, we will take the work session. And uh, then we will talk about our regular meeting. Uh, does anyone have any edits or changes to the work session? How about to the regular meeting that we had on March 26th? If not, one motion would take care of both sets of minutes, if someone would care to do that. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor of approving the minutes for both the work session and the regular meeting in March, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed, say no. That motion also is unanimous. We will not be addressing the rules for our public hearings this evening because we have no public hearing meetings. We have rather one case that does not require a public hearing, which has a much more streamlined set of procedures. The staff person, in this case, Ms. Grannon, will come up and speak to us about the particular case. After that, the applicant will come and speak to us and have 10 minutes to address us. We would then ask questions of the applicant or of the staff and then render a decision after a little bit of deliberation. That is all. We will not have any interaction with the uh, the public uh, without a public hearing this evening. So our case for this evening without the public hearing is 17 REZ04. Good evening, Ms. Grant. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, this is a rezoning request, uh, 17 REZ04, for a portion of the Weston Plan Development District, specifically tract ONI3, which is also known by the subdivision name of Weston Manor. Subject property is highlighted here. This shows you the location of a former pedestrian bridge that provided access from this residential neighborhood to the Black Creek Greenway. So this was a private bridge. There was a zoning condition as part of the Weston PDD that stated that an internal sidewalk network will connect to the Black Creek Greenway to the east by a private six foot asphalt trail and a bridge. is located and the little spur that connects right now or used to connect from the Black Creek Greenway to this neighborhood and their private trail. So the private trail right now comes from the end of Linton Banks Place, goes behind common open space, and then comes to the edge of the stream, the Black Creek. This is what it looked like in 2012. This is what it looked like in 2016. It was damaged in 2012 and repaired in 2016. It was badly damaged and removed. And this is what the condition is today. The bridge has been removed. There is no longer a way to get from the private asphalt trail over to the Black Creek Greenway at the end of this subdivision. There is an alternate route, which I'll tell you about in a moment. So there was some concern about whether or not this was a safety issue. There is a safety warning sign up and barricades letting the public know that there is no longer a bridge at this location. This shows you that the site is heavily impacted by stream buffers and floodways. This helps explain why it's not an ideal location for a bridge, especially a bridge of this size. It would have needed to have had a much wider expanse to get across this area. And this shows you in red where that previous bridge location was. So this pedestrian bridge that was constructed by the developer and installed um, was something that would be ideal with maybe a muddy area that's not in a floodplain. It did not span this creek very efficiently. In looking at the applicant's request to remove this zoning condition, we looked at two chapters in the Cary Community Plan, the MOVE chapter, and deliberated as to whether or not there would still be an efficient, well-designed system to provide pedestrian access from the residents in this neighborhood over to the Black Creek Greenway. And then the question of serve and whether or not making the applicants provide this bridge was really fair to the homeowners for this neighborhood. So those were the two things that we looked at. Um, this is a map that helps identify where the Black Creek Greenway is located. This
this shows you Blinton Banks Road. This is, the red line is a sidewalk network. So that's where the private connection went from the end of the subdivision over to the creek and the previous bridge that was in that location. So it's pretty easy to access the Black Creek Greenway. Um, there is still a route. The sidewalk has been installed. The sidewalk goes all the way from the Weston Manor neighborhood down to the North Cary Park. And then from the North Cary Park, there is a pedestrian route and Greenway Trail that is another alternative route to get to the Black Creek Greenway. Can you make a big loop? No. But is there a way to get down here and enjoy the Greenway? Uh, yes, and it's less than a mile from one point to the other. So the route still exists. Um, this shows you what the bridge looks like in the North Cary Park. Um, much more elaborate than that earlier bridge that we showed you in terms of its size and its height and the construction. Um, something like this, uh, approximately four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars to construct. So, in part of our evaluation and looking at this, the question came up: Is it really fair for the homeowners in the Weston Manor subdivision, you know, forty-three homeowners, to be able to finance this, bear the burden of it? So, you know, looking at that, that was an important question that came up. Shows you the notification map. Uh, most of the people who've spoken about this have been in favor of removing that zoning condition. A few of the neighbors in the Bexley subdivision have contacted staff saying how much they enjoyed having that access route. But as I mentioned earlier, there's still a um, very functional route to lead from this neighborhood down through the sidewalk to get over to the North Cary Park. And it's less than half a mile from the entrance of this neighborhood to the entrance to the North Cary Park. This shows you the property posting, shows you what the trail looks like. The trail now leads to the neighborhood's stormwater management area and common open space. So the trail, there's no problem with that remaining. So there was a neighborhood meeting back in March of 2017. Um, calls and emails, questions asked, can the town take responsibility for this bridge? And when the application was first submitted, um, the applicant had actually put on their application that part of the request was for the town to take over ownership. And we advised they had to take that off. They couldn't ask for that. They could not obligate the town. Um, but they could ask for the condition to be removed. And it's something that could be discussed in the future. Can't be rolled in as part of a condition with the zoning conditions. But at some point in time, when greenways are evaluated and there's more money in the budget, then maybe this is something the town might want to consider at some point in the future. But that's not what you're evaluating tonight. It's just whether or not that zoning condition be removed. There was no opposition voiced at the public hearing. So staff's recommendation after looking at the Cary Community Plan and noting that there is an alternate route for both pedestrians and cyclists to access the Black Creek <coughs> Greenway, and because it would be a financial hardship for one 43-lot subdivision to put in a bridge that meets carry standards. Our recommendation on this request is for approval. So this concludes staff's presentation. Uh, Mr. Hunter, who is the president currently of the HOA, is here to speak to the request. And then following his remarks, I'll be available for your questions. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, board, uh, thank you for this time. I get you to move one podium over. Thank you very much. On the right spot? Yes. Uh, again, thank you for the time to allow me to come before you. My name is Mike Hunter. Uh, I am not only the president of the HOA, but I'm also one of the original developers. And um, we have been, I have been the president of the HOA for a, a good number of years. This is the last ingredient that we have. Uh, I am here because we do and are very concerned about uh, our homeowners. Um, this bridge, when we built it, was built upon uh, the engineer's specifications with regard to the FEMA levels. And we, the first uh, picture that Ms. Grannon showed you showed a 100-year flood. Um, the second uh, time the bridge was blown out, it was a 500-year flood. So we had a 100-year flood, and a 500-year flood was a matter of two years. Um, that's something that, you know, we, we obviously can't control or foresee, and because
because of that there is no way that we can possibly expect a group of homeowners of forty and change to to bear the burden of this bridge as ms granted explains so well to replace this bridge now it appears it could be upwards of potentially half a million dollars we would very much like to see down the road if there is a public private or public opportunity for a bridge for not only this neighborhood but it serves everybody because it was tied into the town of Cary but we're not here for that we're here only to ask today that we remove this burden from these existing homeowners in my hand I have every single homeowner signature asking for this that is a formidable task unto itself to have every single one but it should uh, emphasize the importance of why we need to respect the needs of them as not only homeowners but as carry citizens and not overburden them I'll be happy to answer any questions I think Ms. Granite has done an excellent job explaining everything and since I seem to be the only one here I want to try to have the record of having the shortest PNZ meeting that you people have ever had together <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be happy to answer any questions you want. all right thank you very much does anyone else on this side does anyone have any questions of the applicant or the staff I do just a couple of points of clarification uh, maybe for Ms. Brennan where what's the point of demarcation between from where the HOA property ends and the town's responsibility begins is it at the river is it at the creek is it on the other side of the creek? no that it's the um, I'm just curious the trail right yeah it's uh it's probably right at the edge of the creek probably the top of the bank okay the reason I just uh, and it has nothing to do just I was curious about there's a little bench area sitting area I don't know if that was the towns or the or the HOAs uh, it's, it's not in the not picture a, here but there's it, not a bench sitting area there not on this side there may be over on the town side yeah on the there town may, side yeah there may yeah. be something okay. over on the town uh, so side. that would everything on the other side the, on the opposite side of the creek from the uh, from the from from the manor is town property this is this okay. is yeah, on the opposite. This is town property. There's the Black Creek Greenway gotcha. over there. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on this side? How about this side of the room? <coughs> yes. Um, Ms. Grant, thank you. It's a thorough presentation. Could you help me understand? I, I understand that when the zoning was originally approved, uh, this uh, condition for the bridge was put in place. Uh, if if I'm not incorrect, uh, in lieu of some sidewalks that would have otherwise have been built? Some Back in 2004, um, the whole the whole Weston PDD had limited sidewalks. They had more of a greenway system, greenway network. So that was back in the 80s when that was first implemented and put in. And as some of the development was converting from office to residential use, part of the justifications for why uh, sidewalks were not needed was because of the greenway trails and the greenway network so what happened with the Weston Manor PDD and the Bexley neighborhood there was a concern that it still wasn't sufficient so a few years later the town actually put in that sidewalk sidewalk network from Bexley and Weston Manor all the way down to Norwell mm -hmm. you know down Boulevard so yeah. yeah so it was part of the town's project to actually get those sidewalks installed so, so um, the town did that in because the developer had gotten approval to do the bridge instead of the sidewalks um, I think it was the town recognized that there was still need that that wasn't enough um, and the developer did do sidewalks in their neighborhood as required but, yeah, but not, along nor, not along Norwell which, right exactly okay, got, got it okay. so so I noticed here in the uh, 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 presentation that you put together uh, there's a comment here about this bridge went through some sort of a design review with the town of Cary, the planning department, and such, and it, w and it met some approvals, I guess. And I, I don't know if there's a permitting process, an inspection process that comes along with bridges, as there would be for all kinds of other construction. I mean, I is there? Um, Mr. Clinton is here to speak to that. Okay. He was actually more involved with it, so I'll turn right. it over to all Dan right. Clinton. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. You can use this one. Okay. When the when the plans are submitted, they're sealed by a professional engineer certifying that they meet uh, all the requirements uh, that are set forth to to build this so there was an approval process uh, that went there and in the comment here though 
that's interesting is, I'll just read right out of the, the worksheet here that we all got and it's online. Uh, the bridge was subsequently constructed as Naval was built. The location and height of the bridge were not conducive to ensuring its sustainability. So was that understood when it was approved? Yeah, um, it's, it's a little messy. The maps that were in place at the time were older FEMA maps. Mm -hmm. So um, if you look at the flood elevations that are with the preliminary maps that are coming out now, they're much, much higher. Um, the maps that were in place were, were established before the, this watershed developed. Um, so that had one, that was a factor in, in the uh, mix. Mm -hmm. um, and then the elevation that was set was surveyed in the field. Um, and there, there appeared to be some confusion over the ability to move a flood line by the engineer, so the, the engineer submitted a plan that showed the bridge over above the floodplain elevation, um, and the town saw that and approved that. Okay. So, so all right. So, non nonetheless, the, the bridge was damaged before and is now now gone. But perhaps things have changed with regard to a lot of assumptions, I guess. From that from that watershed has changed pretty significantly over the past twenty years. Got it. Got it. So. I saw something in the neighborhood meeting notes that said, and I think you mentioned it, Mr. Grandin, as well, that a, a new bridge of a level and character like what you see in the park just a little bit to the south, uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe half a million dollars to build a bridge Correct. like that. But I think in the neighborhood meeting there was mention of a bridge, you know, in kind, uh, something like this would be a much less costly bridge. Now, that, we did that not mean? go into that level of detail with it. I didn't. I don't know that we had an estimate with that. Staff didn't have an estimate. Okay, on that. I just saw some words in there about a number which was substantially lower, but there was something to do in kind. The clue that this is probably a location that. That might have been something that the applicant had anticipated, I think. Got it. Perhaps okay. that there was some discussion that it. All right. And, and, and as the situation sits right now, given there's a, uh, a, a problem with the uh, zoning that this bridge is not here, what's the consequence of that to the homeowner association and the neighbors? I mean, is there a... It's a zoning violation, um, and with that there, it's a hardship then to get the, the burden of responsibility. The homeowners don't want to take over responsibility for the HOA with this hanging over their heads. So the developer is still obligated to correct that zoning condition. And as you've seen, it, it's not been an easy zoning condition to meet because of the nature of the... I certainly see the issue given where it, it's at, mm -hmm. but but is there a, eventually somebody gets fined or compelled to do something given where we are? We right sent now? a notification to the HOA letting them know about this violation and telling them that they needed to either ask for the rezoning or replace the bridge. Or replace the bridge. Yeah. So that's what we're, we're and we, we would very much like to avoid fines if we can. We're trying to work with them, so that, I, that's I, I why we I wasn't suggesting that. I'm just trying to yeah. understand how that's always the first approach is to see if you can reach common ground. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. That's all the questions I have. Any other questions on this side? <coughs> Any others? I do. Um, if, if this is subsequently um, approved by the town council um, and at some point in the future the town wants to come back and um, put a bridge in mm -hmm. there, will all of the um, easements and right-of-ways remain in place um, through the neighborhood or will there be some sort of reversion? Uh, it is a private pedestrian path in the residential neighborhood today currently um, you know so there is no right-of-way through there um, the public greenway would be on the town's property unless there was some and uh, you know discussion about the town acquiring uh, you know land along that that private asphalt strip but right now that's a private connection and but we've got a number of those but it's a recorded easement on a, on a plat map is that correct no um no gosh i i didn't double check the plat map sorry i think it's re it's dedicated to the hoa yeah okay so it's it's a hoa easement so it is a private easement for the neighborhood okay so if the town wanted to come back later and put a bridge in there, that could be an issue? No, the, the town's property is where the bridge would be, yeah. Yeah, but, um, but if the homeowner
homeowners association that's built something else on that piece of land then you've got a bridge to nowhere it goes right up to the Just trying to make sure I understand the question. I believe your, I believe your concern is if the HOA had a different use for that property, that's right. Then uh, would yeah. we would we still be able to access the bridge location? Okay. Yeah. And we would have to obtain an easement then from the HOA. Okay. Yeah, we would. Yeah, we would have to get an easement if any portion of a bridge went onto HOA property. We would have to obtain an easement from them. Okay. Any other questions? Just one little <coughs> thing to be straightened out if I can ask the applicant. Are you, the, as the developer, are you still the HOA or has the HOA been transferred over to the homeowners and you just happen to be president because you live there? Technically, this is a hot potato. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe informally it's a hot potato. Uh, I do want to make clarification. We as the developers are not obligated. We fulfilled all of our obligations. The dilemma is that there's really no one who is willing, nor should they, want to step up and try to get this problem fixed. It's one of those unforeseen, unforeseen things you just couldn't imagine. Uh, and because of that, we are, have been more than willing to, you know, to, to run the process and work through the process to try to alleviate this burden on the, on the homeowner association. Great. I am acting as an agent on behalf of the, the Western Manor HOA for your purposes. That's perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Does anyone have a motion they'd like to make? I'll be glad to make a motion. Right ahead. Um, I move that the board forward case number 17 REZ 04 to town council with a recommendation for approval as it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and all other actual plans and is reasonable and in the public interest for the reasons discussed. Is there a second? Second. second. I think she, she, <laughs> she was first. Either that or my right ear works better. <laughs> Any further discussion? Um, d to me, this is a very reasonable request. Um, I, I don't really know uh, how they could foresee this. It's, it's, it's uh, to me, just to ask every, these 43 people to each pay over $10,000 to to replace this uh, private bridge just, to, to me, seems like an awful burden to place on them. And it just makes a lot of sense just to go ahead and let you know waive this stipulation so they everybody there can can move forward pretty much everything that he said I'm looking at this from a homeowner perspective and would I really want to pay that out for a bridge that uh, I've already got a connection to the Greenway in another area that's not very far away so it just from a homeowner perspective it just doesn't make sense so that's why I agree any other uh, comments on this yes I'm going to say no, and I am completely in the mindset of the homeowners. A four hundred thousand dollar bridge or something thereabouts to oblige a neighborhood of this size to do that is egregious. That's not good at all, and I wouldn't suggest that at all. But going back over the history of this whole situation here, there was going to be a sidewalk, and then in lieu of a sidewalk, there is you know a bridge was put in place, and I don't think any bridge, certainly equivalent to what was there before, would make sense to put in again because of poor design and poor location or combination of both, you know, that's insanity to repeat doing the same thing and expecting different results. So, you know, I'm not advocating this kind of bridge either, you know, a cheap bridge but either. But there's no place within our plan where we have a policy which is uh, we have infrastructure or things that help us move or things that help us enjoy the community and our parks and such like that where we take those things away and don't replace them. You know, it's always, we always need to make something better, make something you know, new. We may replace something with something better. And I'm, I'm just feeling like this discussion of uh, sort of like going back to the sidewalk discussion, in lieu of the sidewalk, we're going to do this. So in lieu of a bridge equivalent to this, not the $400,000 bridge, but in lieu of this, we're going to do something else. Is there a sidewalk someplace? Is there an improvement in a park someplace? Or whatever it could be, but in lieu, in lieu of this zoning requirement, we're, we're, we're as a community going to do something else, and I would imagine it would be substantially, substantially less than equivalent uh, cost to what this bridge is than the $4,000 quoted before. And I, I think that would just, you know, for the overall equity of the community, keep us even, as opposed to having something just go away and it's gone. So I, I would, I'm against
against it just simply from the equity point of view of if this goes away you know where is something else for the benefit of the community in the neighborhood going to occur anyone else I'd, I'd remind you if anyone else plans to vote against it I'd love to hear from you so we can have that recording I would, I would agree with Victor except they've replaced it twice um, they must have thought that it maybe it would work but it didn't and it didn't twice so that sort of satisfies me that it's a change of circumstance that would justify approving it I'm going to vote for it um, in favor, but I, Victor's points are well taken. I really wrestle with this, but <clears throat> this is having been there yesterday. It was it's on private property. The access is on private property. It was a private bridge. The homeowners are saying they no longer want that amenity. Uh, points taken about this was conditioned in development that it was replaced. Um, whether with the flood pl the, the flood maps at that time were hard for when doing flood maps to predict the future um, so it is what it is and I just look at it now it's like okay so we have a <coughs> private property is going to terminate at the creek um, homeowners have access both up to North Cary and there's also access it's not a sidewalk but half a mile down towards Western also so probably be cheaper to put a sidewalk going in that direction than it is to put a new bridge but uh, mixed feelings about giving up a condition and not getting anything back in return but to understand that the hardship but uh, do recognize that this you know is private property there's no amenities for public access because you're accessing on HOA property there's no parking in that cul-de-sac so it's um, in some ways it's the 43 member the, the 40 some odd homeowners there are losing their amenity but it's not really losing a public amenity per se open access to all public members Yeah, I guess I'd, I'd want to add on to that a little bit and, and take Victor's point maybe to the next step. It's not my job, it's not our job here to, to arbitrate whether things were done in good faith, but it sure seems like, like when you said they, they've replaced it twice. I mean, they've really tried, and, and, and they used all the, the maps and, and all the tools available to them to do the, what they thought was something that would last a good long time, and it just so happens that it, that it didn't. It's just one of those things. Um, all we're doing is taking away the obligation. We take this obligation away today and tomorrow they could decide to try it again and build another one. I mean, there's nothing stopping them from doing it. We're just removing the obligation for it. So I don't really have a problem with that. The access is only essentially for those 43 homes. Uh, it's not like another neighborhood would pass through their neighborhood and, and we're denying them access to the Greenway because they can go down the sidewalk just as quickly to get there. So. So this is really one of those deals where the, the neighborhood, um, like, like um, Jan said, they're the beneficiaries of this amenity and they've decided that it's, it's not worth it. So, so all that's hanging over their head is this obligation. And, and for the uh, HOA president to, or agent to explain to us that that's also keeping, maybe there's other things too, but that's one of the big things preventing this from, from transferring the HOA over to the, the, the property owner because they don't want to get that and then have this big obligation. So, you know, we can get a lot of things moving just by removing this, this obligation and then and that HOA can get started and the developer can go on to do other things and everybody can, can get on with it finally. That said, here's what I'm worried about, and I'm going to support this. No, this is a no-brainer to me. I'm worried about the next time a case comes through and a developer says, you know how the town wants X amount of green space? I'm going to give you even more green space. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to build this, that, and the other thing. I'm worried about a jaded eye from maybe members of this board, subsequent board going, we've heard that before. And I don't want that to happen because they did everything they possibly could have done. This was a 500-year flood in a, in a, in a vastly um, more voluminous waterway than anyone thought. This wasn't anybody trying to skimp away on something. And I really hope that doesn't happen. I hope there's no chilling effect later on down the road for other amenities proposed by other, by other developers as zoning conditions, because that's, that's, there's no reason they should be looked at any harder for something that's, that's really just a force of nature. So I hope that doesn't happen. I, I fear that might go that way a little bit based on some of the comments we've heard. 
Um, and I just hope that never comes to pass. Does anyone else have anything else? If not, I'll call this to a vote. All those in favor of 17 REZ04, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Any opposed, raise your hand and say no. no. We have an eight to one. The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, does anyone have anything else they'd like to uh, bring up, new or old? Otherwise, we are ready to call a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you and good evening.